from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering InterConnect 2017. Brought to you by IBM. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas at the Mandalay Bay for IBM InterConnect 2017. This is theCUBE's three-day coverage of IBM InterConnect. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Seth Dobrin, Vice President and Chief Data Officer for IBM Analytics. Welcome to theCUBE, welcome back. Yeah, thanks for having me again. I love, uh, love sitting down and chatting with you guys. You're a CDO, Chief Data Officer, and that's a really kind of a really pivotal role because you've got to look at, as a chief, overall, a lot of data within IBM Analytics. Also, you have customers you're delivering a lot of solutions to, and it's cutting edge. Um, I like the keynote on day one here. You had Chris Moody at Twitter, he's a data guy. Yep. I mean, you guys have a deal with Twitter, so you got more data. You get the weather company, you got that data set. You have IBM customer data. You guys are full with data right now. We're uh, bursting at the seams with data, and that's, uh, that's a good thing. And so what's the strategy, and what are you guys working on, and, and what's the key points that you guys are, are honing in, and obviously cognitive to the core is Gini Remedi's theme. How are you guys making data work for IBM and your customers? So if you think about, about IBM analytics, right, we're really focusing on, on five, five key areas, five things that we, we think if we get right, we'll help our clients learn how to drive their business and data strategies right, right? One is around, um, you know, how do I manage data uh, across hybrid environments, right? So what's my hybrid data management strategy? So, you know, used to be, you know, how do I get to public cloud, really? But really what it is, it's a conversation about, you know, every enterprise has their business critical assets. They're le what people call legacy, right? If we call them business critical and we think about, these are how companies got here today. This is what they make their money on today. The real challenge is how do we help them tie those business critical assets to their future state cloud, whether it's public cloud, private cloud, or something in between, or hybrid cloud. So one of the, one of the key strategies for us is hybrid data management. Um, another one is around unified uh, governance, right? So if you look at governance in the past, governance in the past was, was an inhibitor. It was something that people went, ooh, governance, do I have yeah. to do it? Bob wire, right? you know. You know uh, it's, 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 you know, when I've been at companies before and thought about building a data strategy, we spent the first six months building a data strategy trying to figure out how to avoid data governance, or the word data governance, and really you need to embrace data governance as an enabler. If you do it right, if you do it up front, if you wrap things that include model management, how do I make sure that my data scientists can get to the data they need up front by classifying data ahead of time, understanding entitlements, understanding what intent when people gave consent was. Um, you also take out of the developer hands the need to worry about governance because now in a unified governance platform, right, it's all API driven. Just like our applications are all driven, how do we make our API driven? How do we make our governance platform API driven? So if I'm an application developer, which by the way I'm not, um, you know, I can now call an API to manage governance for me. So I don't need to worry about, am I giving away the shop? Am I going to get the company sued? Am I going to get fired, right? Now I'm calling an API. Um, so that's only two of them, right? The, the third one is really around data science and machine learning, right? So how do we make machine learning pervasive across enterprises and things like data science experience, Watson, you know, IBM machine learning, we're now bringing that machine learning capability to the private cloud, right? Because 90% of data that exists can't be Google, so it's behind firewalls. How do we bring machine learning to that? Um, you know, one more. One more, that's, um, that's around, um, God, I gave you, uh, Four. Quite a list. Um, Hybrid data management, unified governance, data science and machine learning. Oh, the other one is open source. Our Two commitment more. to open source, right? And so our commitment to open source, like Hadoop, Spark, um, and as we think about unified governance, a truly unified governed platform needs to be built on top of open source. So IBM is doubling down on our commitment to Apache Spark as a framework, a backbone, a metadata framework for uh, our unified governance platform. What's the biggest paradigm Wait, did we miss one? The hybrid data management, unified governance, data science, data machine science and machine learning, learning pervasive and open, open source. source. That's four. That's four, I thought it was five. No. Machine learning and data science are two, there's so only technically four. five. Great. Okay, uh, got it. If I Sorry. said five, there's only four. Okay. Talk Sorry. about the data governance thing because this unification is interesting to me because one of the things that we see in the marketplace is people hungry for data ops. Like what DevOps was for cloud, yeah. there's a whole application developer model developing where um, there's a new developer persona emerging where it's like, I want to code and I want to just tap data handled by brilliant people or cognitive engines yeah. that just serve me up what I need, like a routine or a procedure or a subroutine, whatever you want to call it. They, that's a data DevOps model kind of thing. Yeah. How are you guys doing? Is that, are you, do you agree with that and how does that play out? So I, that, that's a combination in my mind, that's a combination of an enterprise creating 
data assets, right? So treating data as the asset it is and not a digital dropping of applications, right? Um, <laughs> and it's, it's that combined yeah. with metadata, right? It gets back to the Apache Atlas conversation. If you want to understand your data and know where it is, right, it's a metadata problem. Right? What's the data, what's the lineage, where is it, where does it live, how do I get to it, what can I, can't I do with it? Um, and so that just reinforces the need for an open source, you know, ubiquitous metadata catalog, a single catalog, and then a single catalog of policies associated with that, all driven in a composable way through APIs. That's a fundamental um, cultural thinking shift, because you're saying I don't want to just take exhaust from apps, which is just how people have been dealing with data, you're saying get holistic and say, you need to create an asset class or layer or something that is designed. So, I mean, right? is that if, if enterprises are going to be successful with data, right, now we're getting to five things, right? So there's, there's five things. They need to treat data as an asset, right? So it's got to be a first class citizen, not a digital dropping, and they need a strategy around it. So what are the, what are the conceptually, what are the pieces of data that I care about? My customers, my products, right? My talent, my finances, right? What are, what, you know, what are the, you know, limited number of things, right? Um, you know, what is my data science strategy, right? My data science, how do I build deployable data science assets? I can't be developing machine learning models and deploying them in Excel spreadsheets, yep. right? They have to be integrated into my processes, right? I have to have a cloud yep. strategy, so am I going to be on-premise, am I going to be off-premise, am I going to be something in between? Um, you know, I have to get back to unified governance, I have to, how to govern it, right? Governing a single yeah. place is hard enough, let alone multiple places, and then my talent is a piece Could of it. Could you peg a progress bar of the industry vis-a-vis -vis what you just said, because Again, I think we all got through four. No, talent was <laughs> the no, last one. Talent, sorry, talent. I missed it. The, the okay. progress bar of where uh, the enterprises are right now, because obviously the big conversation on the cloud side is enterprise readiness, enterprise grade, that's kind of an ongoing conversation, but now, if you take your premise, which I think is accurate, is that I got to have a centralized data strategy and platform, et cetera, not a data lake, more than that, software, et cetera. Where's the progress bar? Where are people? Peg an inning or peg a... Boy, uh, you know, I think, I think they're all over the map. I mean, I've, been, I've only been with IBM for, for four months and I've been spending much of that time literally traveling around the world talking to clients. Um, and clients are all over the map, right? There's, I was, last week I spent the week in South America with a, a media company, a, a cable company down there that you know, when I went first setting up the meeting, the guy's like, well, you know, we're not that far along down this journey, and I was like, oh my God, you guys are like so far ahead of everyone else, it's not even funny, right? And then I'm sitting down with big banks that think they're like, you know, way out there and they haven't even started on the journey, right? And so it's literally all over the place and it's even within industry, right? There's yeah, financial, yeah. financial companies that are like also way out there. I mean, there's another bank in Brazil that, you know, uses, you know, biometrics to access ATMs. You don't need a pin anymore, right? And, and they have analytics that drive all that, right? That's crazy. We don't have anything like that here. Are you meeting with CDOs? Yeah, mostly CDOs, um, or kind of de facto, like we talked about before the show, but so, mostly CDOs. So you may be unique in the sense that, you know, you're working for a technology company, um, so a lot of your time is outward focused, but when you travel around and meet with the, C with the CDOs, how much of their time is inward focused versus outward focused? Well, so my time actually is split between inward and outward focus. 50-50, roughly. Because part of my time is, is transforming our own business using data and analytics, yeah, right? Because right? IBM is, is a company and we got to figure out how to do that. Is it correct that yours is probably a higher percentage mine's, outward? Than, mine's than, probably a higher than, percentage than outward most, than yeah. most CDOs, yeah. yeah. So I think most CDOs are 75, 80% inward focused um, and 20% outward focused. And a lot of the outward focus is just trying to understand what other people are doing. And, and, and I guess is that, I guess it's okay for now, but will that change over time? Um, I, I think that's I think that's about right. I think uh -huh. you know I think um, I think it gets back to the other conversation we had before the show about your monetization strategy. I think if if a company progresses where it's no longer about how do I change my processes and use data to monetize my internal processes, if I'm going to start figuring out how do I sell data, then CDOs need to get a more external. But pace. you're supporting the business but in that role, business, and that's yeah. largely going to be an internal yeah. function: data quality, governance. Yeah, and the like, like you say, the data science strategy. Yeah, and I think, and I think it's important. You know, when I when I talk about data governance, I think things that we used to talk about as data management is all part of data governance, right? Data governance is not just controlling who. It's all of that. It's how do I understand my data? How do I provide access to my data? It's all those things you need to enable your business to to thrive on data. 
Right. My question for you is a personal one. Um, how did you get to be a CDO? I mean, this is, this, if you go to a class, hey, I'm going to be a CDO someday. <laughs> Not that you do that. Yeah. I'm just being, CDO school. <laughs> CDO I stayed school. in the Holiday Inn Express <laughs> last night. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, know, all, you know, tongue and cheek aside, I mean, people are getting into CDO roles from interesting vectors, right? Anthropology, science, art. I mean, it's really interesting. If you math geeks certainly love, yeah. they thrive there, but there's not one, I haven't yet seen one sweet spot. So take us through how you got into it and what. So, so I'm, I'm not going to fit any preconceived notion of what a CDO is, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm, especially in a technology company. My background is in molecular and statistical genetics. Right, so well, I'm, that a, explains it. I'm a geneticist, <laughs> right? Data um, has uh, properties that could be kind of biological. Well, and, and actually, you if know? you think about the roots of big data and data science, or big data at least, right? The, the, the two of the, the, the probably fundamental drivers of the concept of big data were genetics and astrophysics, right? So 20 years ago when I was getting my PhD, we were dealing with you know, tens and hundreds of gigabyte size files, right? We were, we were trying to figure out how do we get stuff out of 15 Excel files because they weren't big enough into a single CSV file, right? Um, so you know, yeah. millions of rows, yeah. millions of, of crude by today's standard. Yeah, crude by today's standard. But it was yeah. still, how do we do this? And so you know, 20 years ago, I was learning to be a data scientist. I didn't know it. Um, I stopped doing that field and I started managing labs for a while. Um, and then in my last role, you know, we we kind of transformed how the research um, group within that company in the agricultural space handled to manage data, and, they, and I was you know, simultaneously the biggest critic and biggest advocate for IT, and they said, hey, come over and help us figure out how yeah. to transform the company the way we've transformed this group. It's like, it's like you're talking about your PhD experience, it's almost like you were so st stuck in the mud with not having the compute power or yeah. some of the tooling, it's like a hungry man says, oh, it's an unlimited abundance of compute, oh, yeah. I love what's going on. So you almost get gravitated, pulled into that, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. and, and it's, it's funny, I was doing a demo upstairs today with uh, or one of the the sales guys was doing a demo with some clients and in one line of code, they had expressed what was part of my dissertation, right? It was you know, a single line of code in a script and it was like, that, that was someone's you know, entire four year career 20 years ago. That's a great story and I think that's consistent with just people who just attracted to it, they're going to end up being captains of industry. This is a hot field. Yeah. You guys have a CDO event happening in San Francisco. We'll be doing some live streaming there. What's the agenda? Because this is very uh, accelerating field. Yeah. Um, there's, you mentioned now dealing proactively with, with compliance and governance, which was, you run the other direction in the old days, now this embracing that. There's got to get process and discipline management. What's going to go on at CDO Summit? Or you yeah, at the CDO Summit next week, I think we're going to focus on, on you know, three key areas, right? What, what does a cloud journey look like? Or maybe four key areas, right? So a cloud journey, um, how do you monetize data and what does that even mean, right? Um, and uh, talent, so at all these CD, CDO summits, the IBM CDO summits have been going on for, for three or four years now, every one of them is a talent conversation. Um, and then governance, right? I think those are four, four key, key concepts, and not surprising, they were four of my five on my list, right? So um, yeah. I think those, that's what really we're going to talk well, about. The unified governance, talk about how that happens in your vision, because that's something that you hear, unified, unified uh, identity, we hear blockchain looking at a whole new disruptive way of dealing with value digitally. Yeah. How do you see the data governance thing unifying? Well, I think again, it's around, you know, I, IBM did a great job of figuring out how to take an open source product that was Spark, right, and, and make it the heart of our products, right? It's going to be the same thing with governance where you're going to see, you know, Apache Atlas is at its infancy right now. Um, having that open backbone so that people can get in and out of it easy, right? You, if you're going to have a unified governance platform, it's got to be open, right, by definition, because I need to get other people's products on there. I can't go to an enterprise and say, we're going to sell you a unified governance platform, but you got to buy all IBM, or you got to spend two years doing development work to get it on there, right? So mm -hmm. open is the framework, and composable, API-driven, and proactive are really I think that's, that's kind of the, the key yeah. pieces for it. So we all remember the sort of client server days where it took like a decade and a half to realize, oh my gosh, this is out of control, we need to you know, bring yeah. it back in. And the wild west days of big data, it, it feels like enterprises have nipped that governance issue in the butt, at least maybe they don't have it under control yet, but they understand the need to get it under control. Is that I, a I fair think, statement? I think they understand the need, but data is so big and grows so fast that another component that I, that I didn't mention that maybe I, is implied a little bit, maybe it isn't, is automation, right? You need to be able to capture 
metadata uh, in an automated fashion. We were talking to a client earlier who, you know, 400 terabytes a day of data changes. Not even talking about, you know, what new data they're ingesting. How do they keep track of that? It's got to be automated, right? And so this unified governance yeah. needs to capture this metadata in as automated a fashion as possible. Master data needs to be automated. We need to think about applying. And make it available in real time, low latency, because otherwise it becomes a data swamp. Right, it's got to be, it's got to be proactive, real time, on demand. The other thing I wanted to ask you, Seth, to get your opinion on is, is sort of the mid-2000s when the federal rules of civil procedure changed uh, and electronic you know, documents and, and records became admissible, it was always about how do I get rid of data, and that's changed. Everybody wants to keep data now and analyze it and, and so forth. Um, so, so, what about that balance? And one of the challenges back then was data classification. Yep. I can't scale my, my governance. I can't eliminate and, and defensively delete data unless I can classify it. Is the, is the analog true where with data as an opportunity, I can't do a good job, a good enough job analyzing my data and keeping my data under control without some kind of automated classification. Yeah. And I, has the industry solved that? I don't, well, I don't think the industry has completely solved it yet, but I think with cognitive tools, um, you know, there's tools out there that we have that other people have that can automatically, if you give it parameters and train it, can classify the data for you. And I think classification is, is one of the keys. You need to understand how the data is classified so you understand who can access it, how long you should keep it, right? Um, and so it's, it's key, and that's got to be automated also. Um, and I think we've done a fair job as an industry of doing that. There's still a whole lot of work, especially as you get in the you know, kind of specialized sectors. Um, and, and so I think that's, that's a key, and, and we've got to do a better job of helping companies train those things so that they work. And you know, I, I'm a big proponent of you know, don't give your data away to IT companies, right? It's your asset, don't let them train their models with your data and sell it to other people. But there are some caveats to that. There are some core areas where industries need to get, get together and let IT companies, whether it's IBM or someone else, yeah. train models for things just like that, for classifications, because if someone gets it wrong, it can bring the whole industry down. It's almost, it takes the open so, so. source paradigm almost. It's like open source software. Share some data, but I, you know. Right. And, there, and there's some key things that aren't differentiating that as an industry you should get together and share. But you guys are making, IBM's making a big deal out of this, and I think it's super important. I think it's probably the top thing that CDOs and CIOs need to think about right now is if I really own my data and that data is needed to train my big data models, who owns the models and how do I protect my IP? And are you selling it to my competitors? Well, that's right? really- Are you going down so, the street so, and taking away my IP, my, my, my differentiating IP and giving it to my competitor. So do I own the models? Because the data and the models yeah. are coming together, right? And that's what yeah. IBM's telling me. Absolutely. I own the data and the models that it informs, is yep. that correct? And, and yeah, that's absolutely correct. And I mean, you guys yeah. made, you made the point earlier about IBM bursting at the seams on data, yeah. right? That's really the driver for it. We need to do a key set of training. We need to train our models with yeah. content for industries bring those trained models to companies and let them train specified, specific versions for their company with their data that unless there's a reason they tell us to do it is never going to leave their company. And I think one of the things, that's a great point, that you being full of data because a lot of people who are building solutions and scaffolding for data, AKA software solutions, never weren't data full. They're typical, oh, I'm going to be a software company. Right. And they build, something that they don't have a problem for. And that, and you guys have the, <laughs> your data full, so right. you know the problem, you're living it every day, it's opportunity. Yeah, and that's why, you know, when, you go, when a startup comes to you and says, hey, we have this great AI algorithm, give us your data, they want to sell that, resell that model, right? And because they don't have access to the content. And if you look at what IBM's done with Watson, right, yeah. that's why there's specialized verticals that we're focusing Watson, Watson Health, Watson Financial, right? Because we are investing in data yeah. In those areas, you can look at the acquisitions we've done, right? We're investing we should, we in data to train those models. We should follow up on this because this, this brings up the whole scale point. If you look at all the innovators over the past decade, um, even two decades, Yahoo, Google, Facebook, these are companies that were web scalers before there was anything that they could buy. They built yeah. their own. Yeah. Because they had their own problem. Yeah. At scale. At scale. And data at scale is a whole nother mind blowing yeah. issue. Absolutely. Do you agree, right? So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. so. We're going to put that on the agenda for the CDO Summit in San Francisco next week. Yeah. Seth, thanks so much for joining us in theCUBE, appreciate it. Chief Data Officer, this is going to be a hot field. The CDO is going to be a very important opportunity for anyone watching in the data field. This is going to be new opportunities that get 
get that data, get, get in control, taming the data, making it valuable. This is theCUBE, taming all the content here at InterConnect. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. More content coming, stay with us. Day two coverage continues. <laughs>